it's, it's, it's an amazing, quite frankly, a miracle that we haven't had another terrorist attack here on U.S. soil. And the Biden administration is guilty of that. So we are now being told that it's a miracle that we have not had another terrorist attack here on U.S. soil. And it's for multiple reasons. Number one, we continue to allow people into the United States and we have no clue where they're going. And frankly, we have no clue really where they came from. We also continue to fund other nations, other groups, and they funnel that money into you know, other places that are attacking us. For instance, we are allowing Iraq to go buy uh, energy from Iran. Now, granted, they need it, but at the same time, this is happening, so we are pretty much giving Iraq permission to go buy energy from Iran, who Iran is going to take that money and funnel that money into other proxies like Hamas, and they are going to attack Israel, and they could potentially attack us here in the United States. So that's what's happening. Now, I, all this is happening and all this is going on while support for Israel is dropping. And it's dropping because, according to experts, they say that the American people are now educated. We now understand what is going on. We do not just put our head in the sand and not care about what is happening in other countries. Now, we are trying to learn, trying to stay educated. And like the CIA director said, or actually the FBI director said, we are trying to stay vigilant. Now, I want to show you what's going on. Because this is what's happening, according to a poll by Reuters and Ipsos, they are now saying that the United States people, uh, the American people, we do not support what's going on now. Look at this. It says 32% uh, percent of respondents said the U.S. should support Israel when they're asked what the role of the United States should be in the fighting. This is down from 41% earlier on when they conducted the same poll on October 12th through October 13th, so just two days. The, the share of people saying that the U.S. should be a neutral mediator, it rose to 39%. That was 27% from just a month ago. 4% of respondents in the poll said the U.S. should support uh, Palestinians, and 15% said the U.S. shouldn't be involved at all. Now, I want to read you this last thing. It says, Israel has long counted on the U.S., its most powerful ally, for billions of dollars a year in military aid and international diplomatic support. But an erosion of U.S. public support could be, wor could be a worrisome sign for the Middle Eastern country. Here's the reason why. Right now, the United States gives uh, Israel $3.8 billion per year. That's what we gave them in 2023. We are also looking at sending additional $14.3 billion in funding to Israel. However, that was just blocked by the Senate today, actually yesterday. Now, the reason why this is so important is because they are looking for additional relief from other countries. But now it puts into question whether or not it, the United States is going to continue to fund Israel, especially at the tune of $3.8 billion per year. Now, I also want to play you this. Listen to this really quick. Israeli foreign policy. Look, they were attacked. This was a terrorist attack. Back in the early 2000s, you had a, a land for peace deal. The, uh, unfortunately, the Israelis have not had peace. They've been under constant attack for two decades. Then now you have this terrorist attack. And so look, uh, Hamas attacked Israel. So what he is saying is that Hamas attacked Israel. Israel has all the rights in the world to go and defend itself. However, Israel has been under attack for two decades, and the United States has been funding Israel for that entire time. But what we are now hearing is that there's questions as to whether or not the United States continues to fund Israel, continues to send $3.8 billion. Maybe it gets cut in half. Maybe it goes down to zero. We don't know. But lawmakers want answers because that money should be going to the American people or it should be benefiting the American people in some way. It shouldn't just be going to Israel. Israel takes that money and does what they want with it, but does Israel really help and defend the United States? Well, we don't know. Here's what I can tell you though. We now know that some countries are actually pushing back 
against Benjamin Netanyahu and Israel. We now know Belize suspends diplomatic ties with Israel and they are calling for an immediate ceasefire. This is a similar sentiment from many other countries as well. However, some have not gone to that extent and suspended diplomatic ties. Now, I want to just show you something, okay? I'm not gonna show you the video uh, because you've probably seen it, but according to uh, Fox News, a senior uh, GOP congressman, he felt sick after viewing footage of Hamas attacks in a closed door briefing. This happened the other day. Now, we know that many people have lost their lives. Many people from uh, Israel, many people from Gaza, you know, the Palestinian people, the Israelis, they have lost their lives. But what's interesting about this okay, and disturbing is that this stuff is being broadcast all over social media. It's on, uh, it's on mainstream media. It's on the news. It's on you know, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and Twitter and here on YouTube as well. I try not to show a lot of that stuff. I try not to show the, the videos because there's some very gruesome videos, but this was pointed out and shown to some lawmakers. And it was in an indoor, um, indoor meeting. But anyway, in this, in this meeting, all these lawmakers, for some, it was the first time they've seen this. But now they're starting to get their eyes opened and they're starting to see what's going on. Now, I bring this up because this is starting to see a major turn. We now know that Democrats support keeping the U.S. government funded. So this should pass before this Friday. That's good news. And this will push this out of the way. The next thing is funding for Israel and for Ukraine. What we've heard is that Democrats support funding for Israel. Republicans also support funding for Israel. However, if that funding doesn't go through soon, probably within the next month, then that funding will never come that $14.3 billion. Democrats say they do not agree that the $14.3 billion should be taken out from the IRS. Republicans say we are not going to continue to go deeper and deeper into debt in order to fund this bill to Israel. And that's just a $14.3 billion bill. Then there's still $60 billion that could potentially go to Ukraine. But it's what's happening in other countries as well. For instance, Many lawmakers are still looking at the attacks that were on U.S. troops or the U.S. military bases by Iran. Some say the United States needs to do more. We need to show that when we retaliate, it's not going to be a, a in like uh, kind retaliation. It's going to be something above and beyond to show that we mean business. Well, here's what we know from uh, this past week. On Sunday the United States attacked um, or did two airstrikes in Syria. It says right here, U.S. airstrikes on Iran-backed targets in Syria kill at least eight fighters, according to a war monitor. Now, this is what many people are saying has to be done. If, uh, if, uh, if an Iranian-backed group is targeting U.S. troops or our military bases, we need to come and go above and beyond and show them we mean business. Now, I, I show you this, and like I said in the beginning of this video, um, and like the, the one uh, congressman said, it's a miracle that we haven't had more terrorist attacks here on U.S. soil. And it's because we continue to let more people into the United States, but at the same time, we're funding other groups uh, overseas. Well, look at this. This is from the Associated Press. It says right here, U.S. extends sanctions waiver allowing Iraq to buy electricity from Iran. Now, why are we doing that? And really, what are we doing? Well, look at this. It says the Biden administration has extended by four months a sanctions waiver that will allow Iraq to continue to purchase electricity from Iran. It says Secretary of State Anthony Blinken signed the 120-day uh, waiver extension, and it was transmitted to Congress on Tuesday. That was yesterday. It says the extension will reward Iran at a time when it is coming under increasing pressure to end its support for proxy groups, including Hamas, that is destabilizing the Middle East. goes on to say there are roughly $10 billion in Iraqi payments in, for Iranian electricity currently being held in uh, escrow accounts in Iraq. It says 
It will also keep in place a provision including included in that uh, the last 120 day waiver under which portions of the electricity proceeds can be transferred to accounts in Oman and then converted to euros or other widely traded currencies for Iran to buy non-sanctioned products. Says Blinken signed the waiver mainly because the administration doesn't want to cut off Iraq from a critical source of energy. Because if they cut off Iraq from buying energy from Iran, it would cause additional inflation in Iraq. It would also create other issues, okay? So this is what's going on. This is what the United States is doing. We are, and when I said we are allowing Iraq to buy energy from Iran, that's simply what we're doing. But the reason why is Iran, Iraq doesn't want to feel like they are going to be under pressure from the United States because they go and buy something from Iran. So that's what's going on right now. There's a lot of questions, a lot of issues. Many people are wondering what's going to happen in the near future. I wish I could tell you. I wish I had all the answers for you. But as of right now, it's just this, uh, you know, it's all this cycle that just keeps going. And every single day, something new could happen. Something could change. Uh, like today, President Biden and uh, Xi Jinping will be meeting in, uh, in San Francisco. Whether or not President Biden says something that's going to help the United States, that's going to hurt the United States, well, we're going to find out. But as we get more information, I promise I'll fill you in on all the latest news and updates. But that is what we know at this time. So again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys on the next one.